Hello. Uh, this is a continuation of uh, uh, video five of the uh, geopolitical, economic, technological environment series. We would be discussing what's happening in our area of Indo-Pacific, sometimes it is called because of uh, India and the Pacific Ocean interaction and some part of it is called Ocean Ring, Indian Ocean Ring countries, all those small countries around the Indian Ocean, like for example Mauritius. Now, in this um, uh, lecture of uh, uh, five recorded a uh, few days ago, uh, there is a small error where it is stated that $356 billion uh, uh, would be paid by Australia for one submarine uh, to be uh, uh, bought from uh, US. That figure is all right, but it is for three submarines which will be delivered over 10 years. And there is a yard also being set up in Australia uh, where this can be done. Now, the broader context of that is that while Australia till now had the doctrine of protecting its own continent itself around the country and its perception of threat was not beyond that. However, because of pressure by USA, it is being expanded to go and have a capability at least of attacking in the uh, China Sea, uh, which means basically you are talking about that threat perception has become China. There is a lot of division within uh, Australia, uh, whether uh, that is uh, so or whether that should be the uh, doctrine. Most people, most MPs are not in favor of expanding it to China because Australia population wise and GDP wise is um, quite a small uh, uh, country compared to what China is. Uh, and um, USA is very far off. So all the consequences of having a direct fight with China or having an attack capability uh, would be on, on, on Australia. So there are a number of uh, um, organizations which US has uh, developed, uh, something called Indo-Pacific Group. India is part of it, Japan is part of it, Australia is part of it, um, Korea is part of it. And it is led by USA. And then you have uh, the Quad, uh, which is uh, uh, four countries, um, Japan, Australia, USA and India. And uh, their limit is basically to collaborate with each other, etc., etc. And this is a recent one with Professor Mr. Biden having uh, done this. Uh, then, um, um, then uh, we have the Indian Ocean Ring uh, Conference, which is led by India. And uh, China has its own uh, uh, military pacts with the ASEAN countries and so on. So this is a broad security uh, in paraphernalia. And then there are um, islands, small and big. Papua New Guinea is one of the bigger island nation where um, our Prime Minister had also gone a few months ago. And uh, they have withheld giving the military base to um, USA uh, and, and uh, um, have asked for certain capabilities of defense only and not attack uh, from, uh, from India. Uh, they had similar talks with China also. So broadly this region becomes the major uh, actors are China and uh, uh, India and uh, uh, USA and uh, then Japan and Korea, which till recently was having a defensive posture. Now what difference does it make all of this? What it makes difference is in terms of who will protect the commercial channels, who will protect the commercial ships. If there is a war, hot war, between let us say US through proxy Taiwan or others who are its collaborators like Australia, then uh, what will be the impact on uh, GDP and uh, general happiness in this area? It will be negative. Uh, so uh, one has to therefore balance uh, what is your real th threat perception 
because money spent on these things um, uh, doesn't come free. Uh, it comes from something else. It basically means social uh, expenditures. Uh, so why is um, this summary so expensive? It is nuclear powered. That means there is a nuclear plant inside the submarine to produce its power uh, and therefore it can go for quite some distance compared to uh, other uh, submarines. Australia and China coast distance is also not small. It's quite substantial. Uh, so, and, and then the second issue comes whether they have nuclear weapons also. So it is likely that the Australian uh, submarines which they will be purchasing from USA are both nuclear powered and uh, nuclear armed. India is also considering nuclear powered submarines, uh, uh, but not nuclear armed. Uh, so we will stop it at there uh, to say a, on, on one hand there are opportunities also to the military people. Uh, there are opportunities for uh, India to uh, have uh, part manufacturing, part assembling, part uh, component making. Also here, uh, because once Korea and China and Taiwan and Japan and Australia and India start having these things, the other countries are also then impelled to do this also in the Middle East. But these are very, very expensive machines. And when, when you do this, those who are earning in dollars and spending in dollars, it may not matter much. But to a country like India and other developing countries, it means a lot because it's a lot of money. It's really a lot of money. Uh, and uh, therefore, a careful understanding of uh, what this kind of environment is and what it does to our day-to-day -day life. Thank you very much. Okay, so we will um, go further in the next episode of Geopolitical Environment, Economy, Economic Environment, Technological Environment. Uh, and uh, uh, we will call this uh, episode um, 8. Uh, and this is like a summary uh, thing in terms of what we have already been touching in terms of current events, but which may have medium term and long term effect. So, we start with uh, um, the statistics which have been released by uh, the Customs Department of China to look at what's uh, happening in China. Uh, and uh, we had earlier given statistics from Carter Institute Research and IMF in terms of uh, what's happening to its uh, imports in major Western countries. Uh, and that was that imports are going down to um, to USA, but they are going up uh, in Germany, France, Canada. Uh, okay, so uh, let's look at the overall scenario and it is, as I said, the source of statistics is Customs Department. Uh, overall uh, exports uh, dropped last month. These are month to month change statistics. Last month being July of 23, and they dropped by 14.5%. And uh, imports also dropped uh, by 12.4%. So uh, you can say that this is a net drop of uh, at 2%. But the overall quantity is uh, still high. Uh, it is uh, $80 billion plus trade surplus in that one month, which just as an average, if it is projected, then it is about $1 trillion, $1 trillion uh, per year which is almost the size of 60% uh, of the size of the GDP of India. Uh, now, uh, if you go and um, do data mining, uh, and then uh, you see that uh, while US uh, imports from China have uh, dropped down uh, from about $84 billion to about $64 billion, a so drop of $20 billion, uh, about 25%. Uh, correspondingly, in the same period, already the imports from Canada and Mexico have gone up by that particular amount. Uh, so, um, it is indicative that uh, things are now coming from, uh, from via Canada and uh, Mexico, uh, which may have come from China earlier. And Mexico also is beginning to have lots of 
factories, for example, for HP computers and laptops, um, which uh, the Chinese companies are setting up. Those who were the outsourcing um, suppliers uh, to HP, companies like HP, uh, are coming and setting up the plants on Canada Belt or, or the Mexico Belt. So for Mexico, it is uh, an economic opportunity which has come. Now, um, going further, as far as India is concerned, uh, the trade uh, um, has um, increased uh, with China. Uh, at, now, our rate is about $100 billion a year of trade with China. And we have a very substantial trade surplus. Most of the ASEAN countries, South Africa, uh, South American countries, and African countries. China has China has uh, uh, clear surplus. So overall, it has not mattered. However, looking at certain other macroeconomic parameters and then uh, some manageable uh, parameters, um, the uh, prices uh, uh, in China have dropped uh, somewhat, um, showing that maybe there is resistance of consumer demand uh, at those prices. Uh, the manufacturing and production uh, and supply of consumer goods to the domestic market have gone down. Real estate sector and the financial institutions involved with that uh, at the local levels continues to be a problem, uh, which is an internal problem of China. Externally, more and more countries are going for mutual currency, uh, mutual currency transactions uh, with China. That means one about 40 or plus countries. So that trend is growing and then coming BRIC summit will tell us um, sometime towards the end of this month uh, as to uh, what are the broad strategic plans there which China has uh, got. Now let's look at um, some additionality to the technological environment. Um, in the previous uh, uh, videos, we have talked about uh, the role of SpaceX, uh, of uh, Web1, uh, in terms of uh, blue Earth orbiting satellites for uh, developing uh, communication capability. Primarily, it is internet oriented. Now, these are at the lower uh, heights, therefore easier to uh, launch and uh, maintain and then uh, they are also very small size. The other communication satellites, standard ones, let's say version 1, uh, are bigger and they have a lot of capacity and they carry the load of multiple customers. Now in India we had started with the, uh, this uh, series for GSAT, uh, that was the general um, satellite uh, and uh, 24th GSAT has been launched and uh, Tata's are taking uh, a major uh, bandwidth uh, from this uh, particular satellite and uh, have done the uh, formal inauguration yesterday, uh, but will be uh, launching these services from Monday, that is 12th of August. Now, what is it? Um, they, 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 um, uh, they contract for the bandwidth, pay for it, and utilize it. Now, the Secretary to the Department of Telecommunications said yesterday that capability of Tata, now specifically we have to see Tata Sky, which now is going to be called Tata Play. Uh, so it won't be Tata Sky anymore. It will go and have an increase from 600 channels to 900 channels. Okay. The quality will be better <coughs> and <coughs> the other objective uh, will be um, to make it available uh, earlier in accessible places. So that's a value add, which is also a value add of SpaceX and Web1 uh, services. So with this, in a sense, from the stage when India had to uh, borrow um, or buy um, bandwidth from companies abroad, that time primarily US, uh, and uh, Doordarshan had one half-day channel. Uh, now today, um, 
in 2023, uh, after 60 years of uh, broadcasting in, in the country, one particular private party itself can increase its service from 600 channels to 900 channels. Right? So that much of a difference. And of course, correspondingly, the um, uh, correspondingly, the uh, professionals are required, you know, and there are so many more channels to uh, work with. So this is how one looks at the implication that the technology has stabilized. India is very good in this. Um, uh, its uh, satellite launches don't fail, and the services on those uh, satellites don't fail, and uh, it takes into account wherever there is a moisture and, and something else which used to disturb the quality of uh, transmission. It is not done anymore. Uh, now, uh, let's briefly look at uh, another hot area, which is uh, Niger, where uh, palace guards and army have uh, dethroned the earlier president, who was elected democratically with 99.5% of the votes. Uh, but uh, after he has been dethroned, there has been nothing in terms of any reaction from the public. On the other hand, the public uh, has uh, reacted very strongly in very large numbers uh, to in favor of uh, the new uh, party. So now without going into the, the um, uh, without going into the philosophy of you know why these governments change and what's good or is bad or something like that, but the impact of this particular conflict uh, has started spreading. And that is what we are concerned about. Uh, ECOWAS, which is uh, the um, economic uh, forum of the West African countries, uh, 12 countries are there. Um, after giving its uh, friendly warning, then warning, and uh, then ultimatum, uh, has now put sanctions, uh, not military action, but sanctions on Niger, which they had openly said that we are willing to accept. Secondly, the U.S. has a military base there and both the Secretary of State and Deputy Secretary of State went there uh, and uh, tried to meet uh, the new uh, coup leader, uh, but it was not possible because they wanted him to come to the military base of USA, uh, which uh, his party people said, no, we do not risk that because we might take him away or something of that kind. Uh, then uh, ECOWAS people did go and meet them, uh, so this party has not agreed. Now, the second point is its neighbors, Burkana, Faso and uh, Mali, uh, which are also under uh, military uh, uh, rule, uh, have openly uh, said they are in favor of Niger. Now, just next to Niger is also Nigeria. Uh, and so, therefore, not to confuse because Nigeria is the largest population nation in, in Africa. Uh, and uh, mostly Muslim, uh, and uh, has a lot of oil also. But that lot of oil has not done anything good to that country either. <clears throat> but there is a border between Niger and Nigeria, and now that is getting blocked, airspace is blocked. So, uh, Nigeria is, uh, tourism, Nigeria's uh, administrative services, etc., are already affected because of that. Now, ECOWAS people, if they take military action, uh, then uh, there is a possibility, equal possibility, that Niger and Burkina Faso and Mali would react to it uh, and there would be therefore open war. There is the fourth angle of um, um, mercenary forces. Uh, it is said that Wagner might support Niger if there is a need. Uh, now this is just speculation in the newspapers and media. One can't be sure. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, France which used to be the colonizer here and is also the monopoly buyer of the uranium and, uh, and gold um, uh, from Niger, uh, for which they get very little, uh, uh, has threatened, had threatened that, you know, there will be, some, there can be some military action. Uh, USA has said that there can be some military action. So these people are all threatening that there can be. Now, this conflict, therefore, uh, coming from an area Sahel, uh, which is sub-Sahara, uh, which is very poor, uh, would then uh, would then spread to the other places. At least these 12 plus uh, of ECOWAS and um, 7 of um, uh, Sahel region, 19, plus Sudan is also there, which is otherwise part of 
so higher region where the conflict is already going. So 20 countries uh, would uh, would be drawn into uh, this uh, conflict. Russia has not openly said anything, but it's seemingly supporting uh, the Niger's uh, new uh, government. Uh, China has kept quiet, and uh, uh, USA has obviously said that you know whatever person we had installed earlier should be uh, continuing. Now Niger itself has had three coups in the last one year. And this whole region of Sahel in the last 10 years have had more than two dozen coups. So the governments keep on changing, the development takes back, back seat and uh, there are no statesmen who can look beyond today and see what is the tomorrow. Uh, however, there is a, a discontent about the practices of erstwhile um, colonial countries and in the case of Sahel, uh, these are all former French colonies. So it's called Franco, Franco file sometime or Franco uh, Africa. Uh, so let's see how it uh, progresses in terms of diplomacy, in terms of armed action, in terms of economic sanctions and economic sanctions, whether they have any impact or not, uh, and and uh, how, how the uh, um, geopolitical, economic and technological analysis help us where we are going. Um, of course, if the uranium and gold go under the management of Russians away from the Europeans, then its companies uh, will, in dealing in these commodities, become even stronger. Thank you.